Welcome to our cooking show. <laughs> good, good. We're trying to make it more exotic. Yeah, okay. Welcome, Welcome to our, our cooking, cooking show. show. I'm Chris Kerr. And I'm Jay Myers. And we're I've gonna, lost mine already. We're going to show you how to make a closed or open-faced sandwich um, with ingredients that you may or may not have around your home. The thing, the idea of this show is basically we're going to explore. Um, we're going to kind of break the rules as far as what the ingredients should are and how it should be made. The idea with a good chef and a good kitchen is basically just taking the ingredients that you have around and really exploring and trying out new things. I'm going to get started while you talk. All right, so we both love to cook for our families. Well, I like to cook my, for my family. You like to cook for your girlfriend. It's a difference. Well, same thing. Uh, All right. You want to you want to use um, plastic utensils because they are much more affordable than steel options, and they're also recyclable. So it's uh, more sustainable to use plastic cutlery that you can um, recycle after each use, and it's also safer. Um, I've gotten a couple of nasty cuts, but when you use plastic utensils, it's virtually impossible to cut yourself. Do we have extra plates? Yeah, close up. No, okay, keep had... a clean work area. Always don't put your bread on the counter because the counter could have um, meat and poultry bacteria on it. <clears throat> could get you sick. You know, close up here. You don't have a plate. I don't need a plate. All right. Well, you're gonna make a huge sandwich, so okay. Sure. Okay. So you cut the bread. I used a demi baguette. Baguette. Um, which has a lot of gluten in it. Um, you're supposed to have your mask on. Well, while you you're making, is that open? Okay, while the, the gluten bread is open, I am gluten intolerant, so I like to keep a mask on my face just during the bread making. To be Especially safe. during the grilling. Right now, I'm probably okay, but once he starts grilling that bad boy, I better have this thing on. Uh, I'm going to get the crumbs off the table. I'm going to close my baguette so that um, wheat spores don't get near his face. My face. I'll swell up like a balloon. <clears throat> okay, next up. Uh, we like to cut the onions, but also, you know, during this whole thing, when you're in the kitchen, you want to relax, you want to enjoy your time. You don't want to make this like a taxing project for yourself. Go ahead and pour yourself a glass of wine and really enjoy what you're doing. You know, this is your time to appreciate the art of cooking. Now, I myself, I like to drink wine, but I really... I can't handle it. I get drunk really fast, and so what I like to do is go ahead and taste the wine. Enjoy the wine. <coughs> but don't be afraid, just go ahead and spit it out. You don't have to swallow it every time. <coughs> just spit it out and leave your spit cup somewhere where people can't see it, which I like to leave it right there. That's one philosophy. I'll be swallowing for the entire episode. I'm not a spitter. I just. Right. Okay. Let's keep, let's keep going with the. But go ahead and swash around your mouth, you know, really get the taste of it. And then go ahead and spit it out, and you won't get. Oh, okay. Whoa. And you won't really get drunk. But the thing is, Put your, uh, while he's cutting yeah, the onions, over. go ahead and have a pair of goggles or even just a good pair of glasses. Okay, there's a couple of hearts in the onions. You, it's, um, I'm only going to eat the hearts of the onions. The rest of it's non, is not edible. So you want to get the hearts out. I don't like onions sandwich. myself, so I just, I'll just pass this time Man, on the sandwich. I'm really starting to cry a little bit. Um, I also like to break the hearts of the onion up in my that sandwich. That is really strong. It's very strong. This is a purple onion, and we have a purple brownie maker, purple gloves, purple wine. You want to try, and blueberries. You want to try and match the colors of your food to... Mix your ingredients, but match your colors. So the garments... Oh, my eyes are really tearing up. Whoa. Okay. Next up, I have a meat-like substance. Um, I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian. But I like to eat things that look and smell and are oily like meat. Because um, I'm, I'm human and um, I don't know. Well, well, I, I cannot see anything. You want? I'm seriously crying. You want me to put the onion away? 
It's too late. What happens, it's like cutting into, um, oh man, it's like cutting into like a water balloon and the water just goes airborne and there's nothing you can do about it. All right, um, peel off about three to four slices of the meat-like substance. I might even go with five. I'm crying, so I'm not emotional. I, it's the onions, and I might actually start, um, my, no, my nose might start running a little bit too, so uh, that's okay. That's what we're, why we're wearing aprons. So just to keep you on track, what we're doing so far, we've got a bag here. Just move this over. Start making your sandwich. We've got a baguette made, cut. We've got some tofurkey on the baguette. We've also cut our purple onion, and we have prepared it for the sandwich. Really now, I do have an allergy to wheat, so I have gluten-free bread. It's basically the exact same thing. It's just a little bit of different texture and in quite a bit different taste, but it looks the same. we got to interject real quick. Complimentary colors. So that's why we're using the yellow pepper. We could have got red or green um, or orange, but the yellow and purple are complimentary. It, it does matter, folks. Yellow and purple. Sorry. No, I'm just saying, just go for the gluten-free bread if you have a, you know, a wheat allergy. Okay, kind of like when you're carving a pumpkin, you will find that there are seeds in the pepper. So what you do with the seeds, dig it out with your hand and put it in your pocket, and we can actually plant some pepper trees later. And you can have some peppers for your own, um, you know, more organic. Uh, save those for later. Um, all right. Now I'm going to... Cut strips of pepper <clears throat> to put on the um, sandwich. For vegetarians out there, this pepper acts as another meat-like substance. It gives a little bit of toughness and chewiness. Um, so you'll finish your sandwich and it'll last with you a little bit. I'm, I'm having a bit of a difficulty. Okay. It's all about gastronomy and you're getting it all here. You're getting the... <laughs> okay, next up. Uh, I really I don't, don't like, spinach. actually, I don't even like the taste of wine. Okay, we like baby spinach. Um, kind of like, this is, this is awful, but if you were going to eat hu a human, you would probably eat a baby because it's soft and tender. I know, it's, it's bad. But it's kind of the same thing with spinach. Old adult spinach is tough and leathery and, and does not melt in your mouth. Baby spinach melts in your mouth. You do it raw, it'll help you poop. All right, I'm gonna wait on this too. I'm gonna actually, you wanna pop that open for me? Yeah, we've got today, we've got some salsa, habanero and lime. Now this will gr go great with the onion, that spice and the onion, two flavors that mix quite well. I'm still crying. Yeah, you can move that over actually towards you. All right. Now, I won't be using the habanero because I really can't handle the spice. Right, mm, good. Test your ingredients before you put it on your sandwich. I'm gonna get a close up here of the wine. This is like a playground. Get in there, you play around, experiment, learn things. See what works on your sandwich. All right, for a little extra crunch, what I like to do is crumble up. Get a close up of your sandwich. Blue tortilla chips. Blue is kind of like purple, it looks good with the uh, yellow pepper. And then, take a handful of freeze dried blueberries. You can also crumble these up. There's a, a lot of antioxidants texture. inside of the blueberry. Yeah, spoons over there? yeah, we've got a couple. There's a lot of antioxidants inside the blueberry. Um, right. It'll make your sandwich with the peppers. It'll actually blend it all really well. Because they're freeze dried, the flavor is somewhat zapped away, which is a good thing. But there is just a hint there to keep your, Watch your this sandwich. Watch trick flavorful. I learned at Benihana. Right into his hat. Well, one more. Got it. All right. Crumble up some freeze-dried blueberries. Goes well with the wine. Wow. You're having a good time over there with that wine, aren't you? All right. Last step, string cheese. We are in the Midwest, which is the home of string cheese, made in... I like string cheese. No, Milwaukee, I'll, I'll, Wisconsin. I'll a little bit. The nice thing about string cheese is it pulls off in strips. So you might make a nice even sandwich. Let me get a close-up. I don't know. This actually. brand is not peeling off like I thought it would. Usually what you can do is, um, eh, it's not working at all. Okay, I stand corrected. So instead I'm going to make some little cheese curds and put them on my sandwich. 
Now, as you can see, really, as artists and as artisans, it's it's the color that matters. I mean, look at this blend. We've got purple, we've got white, we've got, we've got it all here. Brown, and we've got yellow. A great mixture, and it looks fantastic. Something else you can do with these seeds is you can actually put these on a pan with a little bit of olive oil and toast them to make a nutritious little snack. All right, I'm going to try one more string cheese because what I was hoping would happen was um, I could peel it off in strips. That's not happening. Um, and well, then it might be you, because we have organic. You create like cross hatching with the uh, string cheese, which built a stronger sandwich. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna lay, the, lay it on here, and I want to get some habanero lime chutney I think on my sandwich. This will fire roast in. Do you wanna? Do you wanna not do that and talk okay. about the uh, brownie maker? Okay. Okay. And we so we're gonna toast this. We're gonna toast this thing. We're gonna toast this thing today. Right. Um, but we're gonna repurpose a brownie maker. So all of you that have a brownie maker, this there are one. actually multiple uses. You don't have to make just brownies in the brownie maker. We're gonna repurpose it for a sandwich griller or a sandwich maker. Now, a brownie maker is repurposing an oven. So we're repurposing an oven into a brownie maker, but then we're repurposing the brownie maker into a sandwich maker. So really, there's a lot happening here, but it's gonna turn out fantastic. I gotta say one more thing. Um, I was recently at Subway, and they usually take a knife. Yeah. For some reason, they always do this. They hold it with the knife when they close it. It's just a sandwich artist thing. Um, so be sure to do that. It's kind of like a good luck omen for your sandwich. I'm going to open up this brownie maker. We actually won this in a cooking contest, so... We've got um, the brownie squares in there. You take out the brownie squares. Yeah, please be careful. This is not a toy. Um, now, it is extremely hot. It has been on for the last yeah, you can start uh, 45 minutes or so. So yeah, be careful, pumps. especially if you have these these gloves on, they'll melt right know, into the brownie maker. I've got it here on the close-up. Oh, you're on a close-up. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Once again, I'm going to finish folding the sandwich with the knife, like they do at um, Sandwich Artist Chains, and I'm going to carefully transfer the entire... Whoa. Oh, now listen to that grill. As soon as it touches. Um, now also, the great thing about a brownie maker is it is meant to be about two or three inches apart, which is different than like... A uh, George Foreman or a different type of grill, or even good. a panini grill. We're getting it's a little bit fatter and it has a little more room for your big fat sandwich. String, string cheese is melting, and we're getting a lot of good aromas here in the kitchen. A lot of good. We got some habanero, like habanero chutney. We got a little bit of onion. Um, burning latex glove. I got my finger a little too close to the oven there. <laughs> got to um, be careful. Wow, wow, it yeah, is. Yeah, dude, that really looks like hot. it's melting on top. Be it careful. Is. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you can just use an object to put in between your hand and the grill. In this case, we're using a pepper. Well, that pepper way your flesh hand itself is not touching it, and we're getting a little bit more of the aroma of a pepper. It's working. Now, okay, I think you're probably about done. You really don't need much time on there. Maybe a well, couple minutes, time. and it's filling over the edge. You might, I think you're probably pretty good, Chris. A while over time. No, Chris, no, look, dude, it's coming over the edge. Oh my god, you're right. Okay, okay you don't want electrocution you do not. to happen in the kitchen. Especially in the studio up. kitchen. Now look at it rise. Now it is rising. Let me get a close-up of this because it looks fantastic. You hear that? It smells delicious. All right. Mm. I'm not clean up my plate a little. Um, get ready, and we're gonna enjoy our sandwich. Well, I am. It's not gluten-free. Yeah, and I've, I've, got, I've got some bread here. Ow. I might toast it in a minute. Is there something else you use? Pick it up a little bit of spinach. Oh, you, you want to have something to cool your hand down. So use this, some spinach as a... Oh, uh, hot. Wow. Now, the brownie maker really, yeah, apparently can really grill up a sandwich really well. It smells a little like burning plastic, though. That might be the plastic fork. All right. right. Now, let's go ahead and get a close-up shot of you yeah. enjoying the sandwich. Ow. Hmm. This is really hot. I wouldn't normally do this. We're going to talk about this for days. going to burn your hands? No. Yeah, but it's going to be a liability for that. Well, it's kind of like aloe. Baby spinach is like aloe. Okay. Well, All right. And I am going to... Oh. Hmm. Let's get a close-up of this. It is hot. I would recommend really washing out that brownie maker really well. well I'm going to have a little bit of notes of burning plastic, but... If I can get past that, it's really good, really tasty. And if you can't get past mm. it, just go ahead and drink another, uh, you know, sip of wine. Mmm. I'm really enjoying the sandwich. I 
Far from all. All right. So today we showed you how to say, uh, make a sandwich, how to enjoy your time in the kitchen. Not just any sandwich. I think an amazing sandwich. Um, you might be asking, could I get by with something else other than freeze-dried blueberries? No. Don't try and alter the ingredients. Use the same ingredients we use. Sometimes people will say, I had some uh, beans or something at the house that were freeze-dried. I use those instead. It's not going to have the same effect. It's also um, not the same color. And we're really yeah, um, Spend the money on the uh, right ingredients. It's totally worth it. Or just explore with what you have around the house, you know. Wow. You saw the goggles on. Yeah. The gluten could be in there now. Yeah, you are eating sandwich. Okay, bon appetit. Bon appetit. Our cooking show.